Try to do your best to understand the characteristics of the graph of the logarithmic function as well as the exponential function and know all the basic characteristics of each graph so that when you think about transformations or when you think about solving problems, you have at least some of the characteristics that can, that can help you and come to mind easily. For the logarithmic function, y is equal to log base b of x. Remember, this is the inverse of our function y is equal to b to the x. So here, as an inverse, we might be able to think of if we're, our mind thinks about exponential functions a little easier, we can think about that and then think about the inverse of that function. But when we're talking about y equals log base b of x, the x-intercept of that log function is 1. So the y-x-intercept will be at 1, 0. There is no y-intercept. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote with the equation x equals 0. The domain of a log function is x is any positive real number. The range of the log function is that y can be any real number. And when we talk about y is equal to log base b of x, it's equivalent to x equaling b to the y, where x is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. When we talk about b, b is the base of both the log function and the exponential function. You can note, since the log function y equals log base b of x is only defined for positive values of x, the logarithm of a negative number cannot be determined. The log func equation y is equal to log base b of x can be expressed in exponential form as x equaling b to the y. And the exponential equation y equals b to the x can be expressed in log form as log base b of y equaling x. And so it would be important to know then what your y value is, what your x value is, especially since the log function is an inverse of an exponential function and therefore there is some interchanging as well. Let's take a look at class example 4 and state the inverse of the following functions. We're going to try and answer in the form y equals blank. Alright, so the inverse of this, the following functions. We have y is equal to log base 3 of x. Remember, this is the same as saying the base 3 to the exponent y is equal to the x value. Well, if that's the case, then we can take the inverse now by interchanging x and y. And so when we interchange the x and y, then we'll have y is equal to 3 to the x. So that is the inverse of the following functions. Here in this one, we have y is equal to 8 to the x. It's an exponential form here. And so when we take and take the inverse, x replace with y, we would have x is equal to 8 to the y. And here we can say this is y is equal to log base 8 of the value of x. Let's take a look at class example 5. We're going to convert each of the following from log form to exponential form. So here we have log base 7 of x equaling 4. And the, the format here is we're going to take the base of the logarithm, raise it to the exponent of the result, and make it equal to the argument. So it's going to have that type of form. So here's 7 to the exponent 4, in this case, is equal to x. Here we can say it is 5 to raised to the exponent y is equal to the argument of 15. And here we don't have numbers, but perhaps we can just follow the pattern of the numbers here and say we have the base, which is right there. It's t to the exponent of the result is equal to the argument. Looking at part D here, we have 5 is equal to 4 times log base B of 6. And here is something that we need to notice right away. 
there is a 4 in front of this log, so we're going to make this into dividing by 4 on each side. We would have 5 over 4 is equal to log base b of 6. Now that there's nothing in front of this log here, we have this 5 over 4, and so we can say the base b raised to the exponent of 5 over 4 is equal to the number 6. Let's take a look at class example 6 and convert each of the following from exponential form to log form. So we have 4 to the exponent 3 is equal to 64 and we're going to do this. We have log and we know that it's the base 4 so there's the 4 that's there. Now we're going to take the result and place it in as our argument and take the exponent and make it into our result. Okay, here again we have, we can recognize that this is the base. So we have log base 2 and now we're going to ch take the result and make it the argument and take the exponent and make it the result log base 2 of 1 over 8 is equal to negative 3. Here we have e to the exponent d is equal to f. In log form we have log of the base, there's the base, log base e of the result f is equal to the exponent d. And here we have a binomial expression here but we can say log and what's the base? The base is a, so log base a of the whole result, let's put it in brackets, 2x plus 4 is now the argument, and that equals the exponent. Let's take a look at class example number 7. We're going to calculate the value of t if log base 2 of x is equal to 3, and log base 2 of t is equal to x. If we take a look at these two equations, we might be able to notice that in one case, we have only one variable, and in another case, we have two variables, t and x, in this second equation. So it looks like we could probably start with this equation and find out something in order to use it for the second. So let's write this one down. Log base 2 of x is equaling 3. And in order to solve this, I'm going to change this into exponential form here. So 2, the base 2 raised to this exponent, 3, is equal to the argument, so x. And now that I have 2 cubed is equal to x, we know then that x is equal to 8. Well, using that value, then we're going to substitute that 8 for x and into the second equation. Log base 2 of t is equal to x. So in this case, we have log base 2 of t equaling the value of x, but x we saw was 8. And now we can change from log form to exponential form again and say that 2 to the exponent 8 is equal to t. And then we find out then that t is equal to 256. Alright, so you have enough to do a little bit of the assignment, but I will continue on and we'll continue our lesson. The log form of y equals a times b to the x. Let's take a look at those the characteristics of this log function. Now we've seen how to change forms between exponential form of y equals just b to the x without an a in front and the log form log base b of y equaling x. We're going to now consider how to write the exponential form y equal a times b to the x in log form. So we're going to do this in this procedure. We're going to write the exponential form y equal to a times b to the x as y over a equaling b to the x. We want to kind of isolate this power away from any other operations. So we divide both sides by a and we get y over a is equal to b to the x. Then we can change y over a equaling b to the x to log form. So what is the log form then of y equal a times b to the x, or in other words, y over a equaling b to the x? Well, using y, 
I'm gonna do some rough work here. Y over A equaling B to the X means that that can be written as log base of B of the result and that's going to equal so then that would equal then the exponent. So the log form of y equals a times b to the x or y over a equaling b to the x is equal to log base b of y over a is equal to x. So let's use that property then to take a look at class example number eight and we're going to change each of the following from exponential form to logarithmic form. So we're going to notice here, especially that there is a number multiplying this power. And so we're going to divide both sides by that number. So this will become y over two is equal to three to the x. Now this power doesn't have anything multiplied to it. And so now we can change it to log form. So log base three of y over two is equal to x. In part b, we have this, we'll divide by seven. So it's h over seven is equal to four to the k. The base of four, written in log form, log base four of h over seven is equal to k. In part c, we have again a power here and I'll just circle that power and then we have like an a value but it's a variable is r so we divide both sides by that variable yep. t over r is equal to s to the exponent p and here written in log form we have log base of there's the base of that power s now we put the r argument in here this is t over r and that's going to equal the exponent oops the exponent p here and part d we have y is equal to 3 over 2 times 10 to the x now this is now a fractional a here so we might have to do it in two steps but we can think about it as Multiplying by 2, we would have 2y is equal to 3 times 10 to the x. And then dividing by 3, we would get 2y over 3 is equal to 10 to the x. Now that we have this power isolated with no nothing multiplied by it, then we can change it to log form. We have log base 10 of this whole thing 2y over 3 equaling x. Well now that we're starting to to be practiced at changing from log form to exponential form let's try our luck at a class example 9. So we have log base 7 of y over 3 equaling x. Now we're going to try and change it to exponential form y equaling a times b to the x. So here we have this 7. Let's raise it to this exponent x and this is equal to the former argument y over 3 and then we can say multiplying by both sides by 3 we have 3 times 7 to the x and I'm going to put that in brackets here. I'd like to, to put the power in brackets just to make sure that we know to deal with this power first before this multiplication. Let's take a look at part B. We have log base 10 of y over 4 equaling x. So we could say 10 to the exponent x is equal to the former argument here is y over 4. Then to solve for y, we can say y is equal to 4 times 10 to the x. And although it's not necessary to put this bracket here, I like to put it so it indicates that this is separate uh, multiplied by 4. In C, we have log base 5 of the argument 7y equaling x. Here's 5 
raised to x is equal to 7y. In this case, to solve for y, we would say that y, we would divide by 7, so it would be 1 7th times 5 to the x. And finally, in part d, we have an extra variable here as a base, but the base here is e to the exponent here of this x is equal to y over 5, the former argument. And here, to solve for y, we multiply by 5. So we would have y is equal to 5 times e to the x. So you have enough tools now to tackle your assignment, and I will see you in class.